and uh, in today's session we are going to discuss about uh, wireless networks and uh, wireless hacking and uh, first we will try to understand uh, the concept of wireless network so here uh, every day we use wireless networks to do our own uh, uh, job or day to day activities and because of this lockdown most of us are highly dependent on uh, working from home and the internet and uh, if everyone needs internet in the home then we need a wireless network absolutely so today we'll try to understand how to secure this uh, wireless network what are the steps we have to take in order to secure this wireless networks and how easy is it for the hackers to hack in uh, into this wireless networks all right so first things first a wireless network so let me show you one tool uh, before we understand the terms and uh, terminology here all right so i have one tool with me this is called as a wireless network analyzer which basically means uh, I have a wireless card connected to my computer and uh, this software is going to use that wireless card in order to scan the networks around it which means I will be able to see all the networks now this is uh, more than what you usually see in a, a computer isn't it you usually see a list of uh, networks when you click on the uh, wireless uh, link isn't it you see the name of the network and that's it you just click on connect but this tool is giving you giving me more information than that okay first I'll explain to you what is going on here so let me explain this colorful bars here all right so here wireless network is divided into multiple channels there are 14 channels basically uh, as per the international standards and every region has their own limitation on the number of channels to use okay so that being said if you can look at this uh, the bottom line it says CH1 CH2 CH3 and so on up to CH14 which means these are the different channels on which our wireless network or various wireless networks are uh, used so here uh, if you look at the color bars here okay on CH5 we have one color so what does this color mean if you look at the legend here on the top I hope you are able to see uh, this is SAN MOU so this is the name of the wireless network which is running on the channel number 5 and immediately you will see there is one more wireless network which is uh, running on the same channel okay so if you can look at the name see here unknown SSID something is there but what is the problem with this one well the problem is it's like imagine two FM stations we all know every FM station is running on one channel that is uh, radio mirchi is 98.3 megahertz okay then 95 megahertz another channel is there they both are running on two different channels right so imagine uh, this is radio mirchi and uh, something some other network like this one which has just popped up is 95 so what happens if both these radio stations are running on the same channel what about the performance what about the reception well it will be really bad isn't it because both the stations are transmitting two different type of data okay and when they overlap with each other they cause a lot of they cause a lot of noise right so where do we see a noise now which channel do we see a noise here if you look at all the channels channel number 11 is so messy you can see not just one network you have multiple networks on the same channel which is really really bad for Wi-Fi all right now uh, is it possible for us to change the channels well it depends upon the router uh, the Wi-Fi router which we are using in our home if the Wi-Fi router allows us to change the channels absolutely we can change the channel 
okay so we ideally want to be on a channel which is not overlapping with our neighbors right so that way we can improve the performance of our wireless networks okay so uh, let me see if my router is allowing me to do that so how do you log in into the router now if you are listening to this session that means you are at least aware that how to log in into a router you have an ip address you have to uh, type that ip address in the browser and give the credentials and once you log in uh, every router's interface will be different i am using uh, this one is a, a nokia router i believe this is given to me by airtel if you are using airtel then this is a router okay now uh, on the network section you are if i see wireless I see two sections in the wireless here. So one is 2.4 gigahertz. Remember here, this is the frequency through which this Wi-Fi signal is propagated. Okay, and this 2.4 gigahertz is not just one fixed signal; it has a range of signals. Okay, now uh, if I look at this uh, wireless, if I click on the wireless. Now you will see here. Wireless is enabled. Of course, I'm using the same wireless network to broadcast this uh, live session. Okay, and uh, it says auto BGN. That is fine. Bandwidth is okay. Channel is auto. Now, if I move my mouse here on the auto, I'm getting this because it is not uh, allowing me to change. So I cannot change. But there are some routers. Which allow you to change the channel. Okay, now why is it like default? Uh, it is auto because uh, here you are letting the router choose the best channel which is not overlapping. Okay, and the second parameter, important parameter, look at is the transmission power of the signal. Now usually all the factory settings they set it to hundred percent and give it to us, but sometimes what happens is uh depending upon where you are placing your router the signal can actually leak out of your uh home it may be or home or office it may be giving transmission outside your office where your employees or your family members are not using it so that is the point where the hackers you know they tend to uh, scan the networks and identify the signal strength the better the signal strength the easier it is to hack the networks and here you can also limit the number of maximum users which are used in your uh, network maybe you are having only 10 users or 10 devices or 15 devices you can limit here if you want and the other details and configurations are the name of your wifi network okay and uh, let's say if you are able to uh, if you are technically good okay and if you are able to remember the ssid and manually log in each and every device then even you can uh, disable this ssid broadcast what is the meaning of ssid broadcast that means your name of the, your wifi network will be known to everyone in the range if you don't want hackers to know your name wifi name and uh, you know just to have a constraint here you can simply uh, disable the broadcast okay and the other details like the most important one is make sure that your encryption always always is at the minimum wpa2 personal if it is a home network if it is office network uh, make sure you have a server and uh, all the authentication is done through the server with separate usernames and passwords it should not be like one password you are sharing to your all employees okay so that is again a bad thing in wireless i hope you have understood this one and the another important part is there is something called as wps okay so wps is basically uh, allowing a user to just remember one pin a numerical pin in order to get access to your wireless network okay and that pin uh, can be re easily hacked it can be brute forced all right so make sure that wps is always disabled never enable 
WPS. Okay. Yeah. So remember this: if you are allowed to change your channel, change your channel to something which is non-overlapping. How do you know whether your network is overlapping or not? Use this kind of tools. Okay. So here you can know which channel uh, your Wi-Fi network is and which channel is free. Okay. That is point number one. Point number two here. Transmission power by default it will be hundred percent. Now if you are not able to place your router maybe in the middle of your home, then if it is maybe in one side of your the entire home, make sure that you decrease the power uh, which is transmitted out of your Wi-Fi network. Okay. Now if you want to increase the reception within your own network, use Wi-Fi extenders. That will really help you. Wi-Fi extenders are available on the Amazon. Uh, for 500 rupees or something, you will increase your range over there. Okay. Yes. Now, coming back to the security part here. Now, WPA key is really, really important. Key is your password. Okay. Now, password uh, cracking. Uh, even last week, I told you how easy it is to crack passwords. Well, the same concept applies for even wireless hacking as well. Okay. So this password is already stored in the client machines. So whenever you are connecting uh, to a wireless network through your mobile phone, you might have previously connected to that same Wi-Fi. So you might have given the key, the Wi-Fi key. So that key is actually stored in your mobile phone. So whenever you are reconnecting to the same Wi-Fi network, so those key details will be actually exchanged. Okay between the wireless network uh, client and the Wi-Fi router. So hackers will actually look for this opportunity and they will capture those uh, key information. So directly the key will not be exchanged, but the hacker can derive the key, can guess the key once, this, once he will capture this exchange. All right. So this is one thing. and. Uh, Here, how do hackers actually uh, find which network to hack? Well, basically, hackers will look at the network which is uh, having more power. Okay, so here you can see uh, there is one parameter called beacon strength or decibel per milliwatt. So the less negative the number, the more uh, near they are to the Wi-Fi network. Okay, so minus 43 in this case says that I am really close to this Wi-Fi network. All right, minus 100, minus 79, 81, all these things are a little far away from me. These networks are far away from me. And you can also have a signal quality note here. This one says excellent for minus 42, uh, good for minus 69. That is how they choose. And then uh, what are these numbers here? Well, basically these numbers are called BSSID. Okay, or these are also called as the uh, hardware address of your router. Hardware address of your router. So even if you, uh, you know, disable the broadcast, SSID broadcast, only this information will be disabled, but your router will still be sending out, you know, advertisement probes to the prospective clients using this BSSID MAC address and your hacker will still be able to hack the network. All right. And other than that, you can also see here the heat map. Now, what does heat map tell? Again, if I am a hacker, then I will see uh, whichever channel is busy, more data is exchanged. That will be my more interesting, uh, you know, Wi-Fi network to hack in. So channel number 5 and channel number 11 are really busy. You can see the red signal here. The more red, the busier the channel is. That is how a hacker will actually choose which Wi-Fi uh, network to attack on. Okay, so I told you the tips. Uh, what you have to remember uh, to protect your wireless network. All right, do not share your password if it is an office network. Make sure that uh, your office network is having a WPSK. Okay, so 
yeah let me try to uh, give a demo if possible uh, so well basically what you are seeing is a kali linux machine and uh, one minute Okay, see I have one uh, wireless uh, LAN card connected to this uh, wireless LAN card connected to this one and this one is uh, uh, alpha card what I am using here. Now uh, there are various tools, there are various tools which are used uh, by hackers, sorry about this little glitch here. Okay, while this is being resolved, let me explain to you uh, what I am trying to do. Maybe by accident I have opened another tool as well. See, what we are trying to do here is uh, so there is a mobile client so we have a wireless client here okay and uh, this is my Wi-Fi router now how does this hacking work well basically the concept is simple now a wireless router is pre-configured with SSID that is the name of the wireless network let's say it is proseek and then this wireless router also has the wi-fi key which is our wi-fi password okay let's say the password is abcd123 obviously this is <laughs> not the best password uh, yeah now my client whenever he want to connect to a wi-fi network he will simply enable wi-fi card Okay, which is a mobile phone you just click on the Wi-Fi and then the mobile phone is going to give him a list of all the Wi-Fi networks which are near to him okay all the list and then you will choose the network which you want to connect for let's say ProSeq you will click on that network then immediately you will be prompted to enter your password okay now unless and until the administrator of this router shares the password the client does not have any idea about this key isn't it yeah now how does this actually negotiate let me see now imagine if i click on the proseek what would happen the moment i click on proseek immediately there will be a request which will be going from this client machine to this router hey uh, i want to connect to you that's a request okay I'm explaining to you in a non-technical way there is a lot of things which will go on uh, simple request let's say now again uh, my router will say oh you want to connect to me that's fine okay I'm going to give you a challenge okay what is this challenge well this challenge is uh, some random number or random text let's say this is a challenge challenge okay uh, some random some random words okay let's say XYZ is a random characters he is going to give 
what is the purpose what is the purpose of this challenge this router want to know if this key the client has this key or not okay what will the client respond be well he is going to take this challenge whatever is given to him and he is going to use his key whatever password he has he is going to use that password and then he is going to generate a generate a cryptographic code okay a crypto a encrypted code and this crypto he is going to give it back to the router this is my crypto okay that is this challenge he is going to encrypt it using the key what he has and is going to generate that crypto and is going to give it to him now my router is going to take this crypto and then he is going to use this key whatever key he has all right to reverse it that is to decrypt it and then the idea is he must get x y z that is the same challenge which he has sent to the client okay if he is getting the same challenge exactly the one which he has sent that means the key which is configured at the router and the key used by the client are same so authentication will be successful okay the client will be associated with the router okay so in this process in this process you will observe no way in this steps actual key is exchanged router is not going to share his key nor the client is going to share his key see that is a basic idea about uh, security here you are not going to exchange any of the keys okay so this entire process is called as wpa handshake imagine if there is a if there is a hacker if there is a hacker who is sitting here in and between the client and router and he was successfully able to capture all these four messages okay he has successfully captured by some means sniffing tools and uh, some monitor mode uh, wifi adapter now what is the information he has does he have the challenge yes he has the challenge does he have the crypto yes he has the crypto what he does not have is the key okay so what is he going to do he will have a list of keys which is called as a dictionary or a word list or a hash table whatever you will say okay now he is going to try to reverse engineer this crypto and compare that to xyz so he is going to use key number 1 he is going to use this key number 1 to decrypt and let us say he got some message he is going to compare this message with the original one challenge is it same no so that means this key is wrong key and then he is going with the another key key number 2 def and so on okay so this method is the most common method which is used by the hackers in order to try to guess your password but the challenge is the hacker has to be in the vicinity of your wifi network okay or he may use a high gain antenna in order to capture this data and information okay how can you make the hacker's job really bad well basically this key whatever you are configuring on the router if it is longer and complex then the time taken by the hacker in order to decrypt it will be longer and he may even lose interest in your uh, wifi most of the people they keep phone numbers or names and all that stuff don't do that okay it's so easy to actually uh, capture the handshake and crack the password and the tools which are used to crack this are the famous one is air crack air crack ng tool is used for hacking the uh, cracking the keys and to capture this data to capture this data airmon ng is used 
Airmon NG is used. Okay. I hope you have understood this concept about how actually Wi-Fi networks are hacked. So the practical part, uh, all those things, we share this in the uh, course itself because this is a public media. So we cannot directly share you all the tools and everything uh, because we do not know uh, how people actually use them. Right? They may even misuse us. So this is a disclaimer. So I'm just explaining you the concept. I told you the tools. All right. If you are interested to learn more about these things, how to use this, and there are menu driven tools also which are available to hack wireless uh, networks. So cyber security is really, really important these days. Absolutely important. Okay. Without wireless networks, you cannot do anything. And if you want to be successful in cyber security, then you have to understand basic concepts, advanced concept, okay how to use this tool and have a lot of patience and the rewards will be really good believe me so at proseek we are uh, conducting various cyber security courses and uh, wireless hacking is taught in that course and not only wireless hacking we also teach OWAS top 10 bug bounty hunting system hacking mobile hacking and uh, it what is exactly ethical hacking and also we will tell you uh, what exactly is a uh, SOC center, what is SOC analyst, what a cyber security analyst do, how do they monitor the networks to capture any security events, all those things will be taught in the training. So please call us on the uh, FB page, uh, you can message us directly, we will contact you. Okay, And uh, that's all for this uh, today's session, uh, we just wanted to make sure that it is sh short and uh, informative as much as possible. Uh, see you next week with our next session, uh, interesting one. Thank you very much.